answer the trivia from before. Um, sorry, I have it upside down from what I had it before, but this is a normal uterus. It has a uterine body, two uterine horns, where all of the kittens or puppies are held. So their uterine horns are very large to, and long to carry multiple litters. And then down here at the bottom, it's got the over. This one over here, this cat had no uterine body. So there was nothing, um, no cervix, no uterine body. And there's one u long uterine horn with its ovary, which, so this part is normal but the part where there's no uterine horn is not normal. And then also there was no uterine horn here on this side. However, we do have an ovary and we have a little bag of a piece of a uterine horn up attached to the ovary, completely closed off. Um, it almost kind of looked like a little appendix, uh, but it's completely closed off, had huge blood vessels to it and had um, like a, a sheath that came down from this down to the back of the body wall. But again, nothing attaching here and it's completely blind, meaning it's all the way closed off. So when we see defects like this, it's possible that there's other defects on the same side of the body. Um, I was actually talking to the lady who runs um, the spay and neuter clinic here and she was saying she has experience with that where there are several defects on the side of the body but basically in this case the ovaries are present so the um, the animal will still go into heat and although there was no uterine body or cervix I'm not quite sure if there was a uterine or excuse me a, um, a vagina because I couldn't get down far enough to see where this uterine horn led. So it may be that the vagina attached to a, just directly to the uterine horn, in which case it is possible that this animal could have gotten pregnant. Regardless, because of the hormones that are produced because of the tissue, she still could have gotten a pyometra, which is a, a uterine infection, which can be deadly. So we did go ahead and spay her, but interesting and actually because it was so difficult to get to this section um, the bladder is also very bruised so we are putting her on medication to help with that but all of this area down here is tucked up underneath the bladder and so it was difficult to find and I actually had to open her um, way up so instead of a normal little tiny incision like that she has an incision about like that so interesting day uh, if you have any questions go ahead and post them have a great day. So going along with the video that I showed earlier on the uterus, I wanted to do the tip of the day. Um, so welcome to the tip of the day. I'm Dr. Amy Starr with the Mason Veterinary Clinic, Paws and Hooves Mole Veterinary Services in San Francisco Stables. And we're helping El Paso help their pets. So uh, sorry to get back to that. I wanted to focus on spaying your pets. Uh, I know I talk about this a lot. I'm passionate about it. I strongly, strongly believe that it is so important that all of our pets be spayed um, and neutered and not only for the ethical reasons of here in our area in El Paso, El Paso has to put down, has to euthanize up to 20,000 pets a year because of overpopulation. And so it's extremely sad to me that we allow pets to continue to multiply when there are already pets here that need homes. So, um, you know, that's one reason just to be ethical. But also I know a lot of people have worries or concerns about putting their pets under anesthesia for this spay. But, you know, on our end, on the medical end where we do a lot of them, you know, one, it, we consider it a routine surgery. It's pretty um, straightforward and pretty quick. And so the risk of anesthesia is very low. However, no, no surgery is completely routine. You know, as you saw, and if you watched us for a while, you've seen a lot of other cases where there are difficulties. And the difficulties increase with age. And the, you know, the chubbier the pet gets, the older the pet gets, the more litters the pet has had, it makes it a lot more difficult. So as a doctor doing the surgeries, um, I always beg and plead that, you know, we get these young animals in for surgery before they've ever come through their first heat cycle because it's easier on the pet. It means that we've prevented, you know, another six to 12 animals that now also have to be spayed and neutered and we have to find homes for. 
and it also helps to prevent all the diseases that we get. So as you guys have watched, you've seen a lot of different issues. Um, you know, the, the uterine problems, the ovarian problems, um, you know, all sorts of issues. I had a dog in today also that the uterus was full of little retained placentos um, that can cause problems and the dog was bleeding and stuff like that. And so, you know, as, as an owner where you may have had one or 10 pets in your life, we see hundreds of pets and we see hundreds of problems and it's so sad to me and that's why I'm so passionate about it. So please, 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 you know, think about um, all of the studies and all the research out there that shows that pets are healthier when they're spayed and neutered. We don't want to humanize our pets and give them emotions that we feel that they don't feel. You know, a lot of people when we say, oh, you need to spay or neuter your pet, they say, oh, that's cruel. Oh, they would you know, miss being intact or, oh, they would miss having a family or they'd miss being with, you know, a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. Um, I even had one person tell me one time, well, I wouldn't do that to my husband, so why would I do it to my dog? And, you know, not to be rude, I hope I'm not offending anybody, but my thought was, well, I hope your husband's not jumping the fence, um, you know, getting to every female in the neighborhood. <laughs> um, so we can't really humanize our pets. Our pets are our loved ones and we care and we, you know, dearly love them, but they don't have the same emotions that we do. They are happier and they're healthier when they are spayed, when they don't have to go through the hormonal changes that cause them stress and anxiety and disease. So please, 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 as you can see, I'm passionate about it. Every single pet in El Paso, dog, cat, um, rabbit, you know, be spayed and neutered. If you have any concerns, please let us know. We're here to answer those concerns. We want to make it easier on you and, and um, you know, answer any questions that you have. We have a lot of people that come to us from other um, places that have been told, oh, the pet can't be have surgery because it's too old or, oh, it can't have surgery because it's too chubby or it doesn't need surgery because the other, you know, dogs in the house are already spayed or neutered and all of those are completely false. So if you have any of those thoughts, let us know and we will answer them and we'll educate and, and um, help you make the right decision for your pet. Have a great day.